Hey guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be filming my best books that I read in 2018. And this year in particular, it was very hard to put these books in an order. Like I read a freaking shit ton of amazing books this year and these are my top 15 that I've come up with. But honestly, you guys, take this order with a grain of salt because seriously, this order was very hard to put the books into and also I feel like my top 10 books honestly could have all been number one if I had read them in different years. Let's start with some honorable mentions before I jump into my list because like I said, I read a lot of fucking great books and these books also deserve recognition even though they didn't make it into my top 15. So the first one is Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. The next one is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. The next one is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. The next one is Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. The next one is The Light We Lost by Jill Santapalo. The next one is The Light as we told by Camille Way. Next up we have No Exit by Taylor Adams. Next is Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. Next is An Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Buchanan. And the last one is The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna, which, you know, <laughs> I am just as surprised as you are that a lot of these books weren't actually in my top 15, but I read a lot of really fucking great books this year. So without further ado, let's just jump into my top 15. Coming in at number 15 is going to be Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. I'm sure most people now know what Ready Player One is about, but if you don't, this book follows this teenage boy named Wade Watts who's living in a futuristic dystopian world in 2044 in Oklahoma in this trailer park. And it's kind of like this crazy massive trailer park because poverty has taken over the world at this point. This game called The Oasis that everyone participates in and is obsessed with and it's like a virtual reality world. The creator of The Oasis, James Halliday, has recently died of cancer and he left behind an easter egg in his video game that is the key to his entire fortune. And so whoever finds this easter egg will inherit his 240 billion dollar fortune and take over as like the owner of the oasis and like carry on the game and so this book follows wade as he tries to find this easter egg with a group of his friends <sighs> this book was just so much fun to read and i'm not a huge like sci-fi person but this book was extremely fun and i loved all the 80s references and i loved the friendship between the characters in this book and also the world building was just really cool and just the whole idea of the oasis is really cool really well thought out and just so fascinating to me, so I really, really had a great time reading this book. Number 14 on my list is Sleeping Giants, and this is another sci-fi. <laughs> Honestly, this is probably one of the best reading experiences I've ever had because I simultaneously listened to the audiobook while I was reading this book, and like this book is a bit of a heavy sci-fi, so if sci-fi is not really your thing, then I highly recommend the audiobook because the audiobook is probably the best audiobook I've ever listened to because they have so many voice actors and it really feels like an action movie when you're listening to the audiobook because of all the like sound effects and everything that they do. So this story follows this girl named Rose who when she was a younger girl she fell into the hand of this giant like a giant hand was buried underground and she like fell off her bike and fell into the hand when she was a little girl. And then the story takes place 14 years later when she's an adult and she has a PhD and she's gonna be the one leading the crew to figure out what exactly this giant metal hand is. So it brings forth a lot of these like really creepy questions like who was here before us or are there other people living or are there other species living among us that we don't know about and just a lot of creepy things like that that I really love thinking about when it comes to sci-fi things. I also love that Rose and Kara were some of the most badass female characters I've ever read about and that fucking plot twist at the end slayed my life and made it one of my favorite books of all time so this book was fucking awesome. I think what's really cool too about this though is that I usually don't read sci-fi and I usually don't read series, but I read this entire book series this year. It's only three books, but still, it was the only series I read and I loved it. Number 13 on my list is The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. This is a romance by Mariana Zapata and this is the slowest, slowest burn of all the slow burn romances. <laughs> So this book follows this guy, Aiden, who's a vegan Canadian 
NFL player. And then it follows his personal assistant named Vanessa. Vanessa has been his assistant for two years now and she's just kind of like fed up of his bullshit. She thinks he's an asshole and like doesn't really care about anything. And so she makes plans to quit. And then a few months after she has quit, Aiden reaches out to her to help him with something that I'm not gonna spoil for you and things just really take off from there. What I loved about this book is that Vanessa is just sassy as hell and she's so inspiring and she like doesn't take shit from anyone and she's just one of my favorite fe female characters that I've read in a romance in a really long time. I love that she's determined and optimistic but she's not naive and I loved Zach as a side character because he was such a ball of sunshine. And I just really thought he was adorable and so cute. Fucking romance in this book. Honestly, like, it made me so giddy when I was reading some of these scenes. I was like, mm. because, like, you know, it's such a slow burn romance. Like, it takes so long for anything to happen between these two. And when it finally did, like, oh my god. They were just so, so cute. So, I love this one. <laughs> 12 on my list is This Is How It Always Is by Lori Frankel. This one is a contemporary fictional story about this family. Rosie and Penn have four sons and they get pregnant again and they think that they're gonna have another fifth son until Claude arrives. Claude is born a boy but then after a few years they discover that Claude wants to be a girl. And what I really love about this book and I think makes it so special is that this author is drawing from her personal experiences of something that happened in her family like this and telling the story about a child who wants to identify as a transgender and how that affects the parents and the family and the child and just everyone in their lives. This family decides to move to a more liberal accepting place, Seattle and they leave their small town behind and they decide not to tell anyone in Seattle that Claude was born a boy and now he identifies as a girl. It really makes you question what rights do the parents have to make decisions for their child and what rights does that child have to decide for themselves or like are they too young to decide things as big as their gender for themselves and this book just made my heart hurt in so many ways like I just fucking loved this family so much and I loved that Rosie and Penn didn't have typical gender norm roles as parents because Rosie is like definitely the provider for their family and then Penn is the stay-at-home dad and he's the romantic he is a writer I made a full book talk for this if you want to see it so I'll be putting the link in the description for it but Holy crap, I love this book. <laughs> Number 11 on my list is I Found You by Lisa Jewell, and this is a thriller. This thriller follows two point of views. So it follows the point of view of Alice, who lives on a beach with her kids, and she sees this strange man like wander onto her beach property, and he claims that he doesn't know his name, and he has no memories, and he like literally doesn't know who he is. And then it also simultaneously follows the point of view of this other woman who her husband has recently disappeared and she has no idea where he went. And it seems like these two point of views would obviously have a very obvious connection, but they don't. In my opinion, it's a very emotionally investing thriller like most of Lisa Jewell's books are to me. But this one in particular just really like, oh my god, I read this all in one day and I just couldn't put it down. I just love how in her thrillers you really get emotionally invested into every single character. She's just such a good writer. Oh, I just loved it so much. Coming in at number 10 is The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. To be honest, when I first read this book, I was a little torn of how I felt about it because my brain was like, what the fuck did I just read? But after having more time to sit on this, I fucking love it. Like, I haven't been able to stop thinking about this book since I read it in July. This is a thriller slash horror novel about this family. So it follows this gay couple named Eric and Andrew, which also this book gets bonus points for having an LGBT couple as the main characters in a horror novel. Slay my life, Paul Tremblay. As I said, this book follows this gay couple, Eric and Andrew, and then it also follows with their adopted daughter, Wen. This family goes to their cabin that they have in the middle of the woods during the summer, and then these four people show up at their cabin. It's kind of like a home invasion type story, creepy, scary stuff. And then they're saying that the world is coming to an end, but they need Eric and Andrew to perform this very horrific act in order to prevent the end of the world. This couple is just put through a lot of very terrifying and scary things. This is just one of the craziest books I've ever read in my life. If you've ever seen the movie The Killing of a Sacred Deer, then you might have an idea of how unsettling 
this book is. It's a lot like that. It's very similar actually. Holy fuck, this book gave me so much anxiety. Like while I was like laying there reading this, the slightest sound in the background like made me jump out of my skin while I was reading this. Like I just had so much anxiety. Like my heart was fucking racing. And like, I think the main reason is because I cared so much for this fucking family. They throw in some flashbacks of this family and just like, oh my God, they're the cutest little family and they deserve all the happiness in the world. And like to see them go through all this, was fucking torture for me. The ending still simultaneously pisses me off, but I also like appreciate it so hard. So I just really fucking love this book. Like this book will never leave my mind. Number nine on my list is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. All right, so this book is a new adult romance novel and it follows this girl named Kala who's 26 years old and she was born in Alaska. But then when she was two years old, she moved to Toronto with her mom. And now she finds out that her dad who still lives in Alaska is dying of cancer. And so she wants to go back and visit with her dad in Alaska before he potentially passes away. This book is kind of like the last song, but in Alaska, but like so much better in my opinion. <laughs> Part of the reason why I love this book so much is because I have this wild fascination with Alaska lately. This story really takes place in Alaska. It's very atmospheric and like, you just feel like you're there. Loved the father-daughter relationship between Kala and her dad and it's it was complicated but it felt so real and I love that this book is not only a romance like it's categorized as a new adult romance but it really feels more like just a contemporary story to me with a little bit of romance. The romance in it though is so good. Her dad is a pilot in this book and so he owns this airport full of all these different airplanes. He's basically like the supplier for Alaska when it comes to airplanes. Her love interest in this book is Jonah who is one of the pilots that works for her dad. He's like one of those hot-headed annoying ass characters at first that you just grow to love and you find out they're like a fucking soft squishy human on the inside and you're like oh my god. The story not only had the beautiful father-daughter relationship happening but it also had this amazing like hate to love romance slash slow burn romance happening in this book and I just fucking love Jonah like I loved him so much in this book like they were fucking cute as shit so number eight on my list is Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas this is another new adult romance and this is my favorite new adult romance that I've read this year this book is just fucking great follows this girl named Jordan who's dating this guy named Cole. Jordan is at the movie theater by herself one night when she meets this guy named Pike who's 38 years old. She shortly comes to find out after they kind of hit it off that Pike is Cole's dad and that Pike had Cole when he was 18 years old and so she finds out that Cole's dad is Pike because Cole gets arrested and Pike has to go pick him up and then he has a situation where he has to move back in with his dad because of the situation of him getting arrested and so then Jordan also has to move in with his dad because they live together. We get this amazing story of this sexual tension chemistry happening between Jordan and Pike. The romance is so forbidden. I mean obviously because it's, you know, a 19 year old girl and his dad who's you know 38 chemistry between these two and oh my god it was just so forbidden it was so good and can i just say that i fucking love pike like he's my biggest fictional crush of 2018 he's so swoon worthy i just fucking love him and i love him and jordan like i feel like jordan is so mature for her age i love jordan as a main character in this book because she's so fucking sassy and she literally doesn't take shit from men and she will like correct men when they're being sexist and fucking annoying and i just love that about her like she's one of my favorite female protagonists I've ever read. I just, oh my god, I loved the romance so much and the forbiddenness of it kept me on the edge of my seat the whole book. I was like, oh my god, something's gonna happen, oh my god. So number seven on my list is Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. I can't believe I waited so long to read this book because it was so fucking great. The book is a thriller that follows these three women mainly named Madeline, Celeste, and Jane. The story starts off with a murder on their school's trivia night. It felt like all these three women are moms of kindergartners that go to the same school. And it starts off with a murder on the night of their trivia night and you don't know who is murdered or what exactly happened, but then, then they start at the beginning of the school year again and you get to kind of follow the story up until the trivia night again at the end. I was also surprised at the really powerful message about 
about feminism and rape culture and domestic violence in this book and how we view women as objects, that that was so important and I feel like it just made this book so much better. Each of these three women have such unique voices in this book and I, you didn't even have to tell me which point of view it was from, like I could tell just by the writing which character I was reading from because they were all so different and so unique. I loved that this kind of read as like a dark comedy at times. So number six on my list is Verity by Colleen Hoover and this is my most recent read on this whole list because I just read this book about a week ago. This is a psychological thriller from Colleen Hoover. I know that some people are saying that this book is kind of like a romantic thriller but I would honestly just classify this more as a psychological thriller with some romance in it, like some romance vibes. Follows this writer named Lowen who is going to be taking over this book series for a super successful author named Verity Crawford. Verity gets in a car accident that puts her in a state that's kind of like a coma, like she's very unresponsive. Lowen moves into the house where Verity and her husband Jeremy are living. It's so eerie and so creepy. There are some scenes in this book that literally gave me fucking chills and made me feel so creeped out, but like in the best way, you know? And this writing to me really felt like Taryn Fisher's writing. Verity's character in general is just very fascinating to me. Like I just really, really enjoyed reading about her character because she's such an interesting mind. But but the ending of this book is honestly what made it on to my favorites of the year list because holy shit that ending at this book all in one sitting like i stayed up until two in the morning finishing this book and i haven't done that in a really long time like staying up late to finish a book because i just can't possibly put it down <laughs> Five on my list is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This is a gorgeously written contemporary story about this family in Shaker Heights, Ohio in the 90s. So it mainly revolves around this family, the Richardsons, and then it also follows around Mia and Pearl who rent out an apartment little space that's right next to the Richardsons' house. And then it's about how the Richardsons' lives become mixed up in Mia and Pearl's lives as well. The story begins with a fire, one of their kids, disappears after the fire. So the story also deals with this very controversial lawsuit of the adoption of this Asian baby. There are just so many layers to this story. I really love the things that this book has to say about families and secrets and motherhood and art. So this controversy was so hard to read about because like I could honestly see both sides and it's so tragic for me to see a mom trying to fight for her rights for her child back even though she made a huge mistake but also it's also so hard to see the adoptive parents of this child who have taken care of her for the last like 10 months or so trying to fight for their rights like this is my child now you gave up on her we've been there for her oh this one in particular was just so powerful because it also talks about like the culture and like the race that goes with that too like should a child be raised by someone their own race or like there is that saying maybe if when a baby was born if they were given to parents of a different race maybe that would end racism forever because you are automatically exposed to different races and different cultures as a baby i just really 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 love this book and i also do have a full book talk for this book if you want to see it link will be in the description <laughs> So number four on my list is going to be The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. Literary fiction slash historical fiction novel that follows this man named Cyril from his birth and conception until the end of his life. Like it literally spans his entire life in this book, which I think is fucking beautiful. Cyril is a gay man that's born in the 1950s in a very conservative part of Ireland. <laughs> Talks about his battle with LGBT rights within Ireland and within the church and his community. When he's a kid, he gets adopted by this couple named Charles Avery and Maud Avery, and they're decent enough parents, but they always give him the impression like he's not a real Avery. Like when he's a young boy, he meets this other boy named Julian who becomes his obsession for a few years to come. This story just has so much heart and humor mixed into it. This book is just a fucking damn good story. You know what I mean? Like it's just fast moving. It's fast paced for how long it is. Like it's almost 600 pages, but like it spans his entire life and it's just constantly moving. But Cyril is just a wonderfully complex and flawed character. Like there were definitely points where I was like, what the fuck, dude? Like, he just crossed the line at some parts and I just, I don't agree with a lot of the decisions that Cyril made at some points in this book. The moments in this book between Cyril and his birth mother 
are what made this book so special to me. Like I fucking loved that so much in this book. I feel like this story is very bittersweet kind of in the way that life is. I also have a full book talk for this one that I will also put the link in the description for. <laughs> Number three on my list is Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. Vicious is one of my all-time favorite books, like ever, ever, ever. And then this book is the sequel to Vicious. It follows these people with extraordinary abilities who try to fight the moral ground between what's right and what's wrong, what it means to be a villain and what it means to be a hero. Victor Vale is the biggest anti-hero I've ever read in a book that, that I just fucking love. Like, he honestly reminds me so much of the Joker at times. This book is also action-packed as hell, and I read 450 pages of this book in one day. Has that ever happened before in my life? Like, I'm not sure. Like, it was just so good and so impossible to put down. <laughs> I also loved the new badass female characters that were introduced in this book, June and Marcella. I thought that they were so cool and that their powers were so epic and just so badass. Can I just say that Eli Ever is one smart motherfucker. Like, I'm definitely team Victor when it comes to Victor versus Eli, but like, Eli is so fucking smart. Love his character. He's so interesting and I love getting more backstory into Eli's childhood in this book. Oh my god, the way the action sequences played out at the end of this book, like it honestly felt like watching a really fucking good superhero movie. V.E. Schwab, like she just really knows these characters and understands their powers to their full abilities because she's able to write them so well and in such an interesting way. And oh my god, the ending of this book, like I need a third book. I need this to be a trilogy. This blew my expectations and I already had really high expectations. <laughs> For my top two books of the year, I really struggled trying to figure out which of these was going to be my number one because both of these books are so, so special to me. And honestly, both of these books deserve to be number one. Coming in at number two is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. This is a literary fiction novel that is 815 pages long. It's the longest book I read this year. Like this book is probably the most depressing book I've ever read in my life. There were times when I was reading this that I had to stop reading it because I was crying so much and I just like couldn't even. Tackles a lot of different subjects like mental illness, depression, disabilities, and sexuality. So this story mainly centers on Jude who's this young man who's suffered an insanely unimaginable terrible childhood. Then it follows his story with three of his closest friends, Willem, JB, and Malcolm. The story starts when they're in their 20s and then it kind of like follows throughout the rest of their lives. So Willem is an aspiring actor and he's probably his closest friend out of the three of them. Willem is also like the biggest fucking sweetheart and he's so inspiring and him and Jude's friendship is so so cute and he's easily my favorite character in this book. Like I just really fucking loved Willem. And then JB is a painter and a drug addict and he is gay and he's from Haiti. And then Malcolm is an architect who still lives with his parents at 27 years old and he's struggling with his identity and his sexuality and trying to figure out who he is. This book was like one of the best reading experiences I've ever had simply because this book is 800 pages. It took me a week to get through this and so I feel like I really took some time with these characters and this writing is just absolutely gorgeous. Like it is so, so gorgeous. Like one of the best written books I've ever read. I think this book especially hits me really hard because I had to put my dog down while I was reading this book, like in the middle of this book. And not only was that one of the most depressing experiences of my life, but reading this book on top of that, like, oh my god, I was fucking emo. Some of the quotes in this book about depression, about Jude trying to be normal, I related to it so hard and it just hit me on such another level and talking about relationships and how, f why can't friendship be enough for people in society to understand? Like, why do we have to be in romantic relationships? And honestly, like Willem and Jude, like their friendship is one of the most beautiful things I've ever read about. This story and these characters are just gonna stay with me for the rest of my life. And like, I don't know if I'm ever gonna have the courage to reread this book but I do want to say that if you want to see my book talk for this which I've also done I'm really proud of this book talk that I did because I pointed out very specific passages that I really love in this book that I still think about to this day and I think some of the passages in this book are the best I've ever read in my life so definitely check out my book talk if this is at all interesting to you <laughs> my number one book 
of 2018. And that is gonna go to The Humans by Matt Haig. This one reminds me a lot of We Are the Ants, which is my favorite book of all time. So this book is my number one book of the year. Contemporary sci-fi coming of age story that follows this alien who comes to Earth in the body of Andrew Martin, who is this mathematician who has recently discovered something that's gonna like change everything on planet earth and the aliens have been watching us and they decide like humanity is not ready for that shit you know like they need to send someone in there immediately and kill everyone who found out about the the mathematical theory that this guy solved we follow from the point of view of the alien while he's in andrew's body this is the funniest fucking shit i've ever read okay because in this alien's mind he like makes fun of humanity all the time and he writes this book like he's writing it to his other alien friends and it's just the most entertaining shit okay because the way he makes fun of humanity and how ridiculous we are like i couldn't help but agree with half the shit he's talking about this book just has so many thought-provoking statements about what it means to be human and what love is and what human life and death means and do we matter and like that is mainly the reason why i think it reminded me a lot of we are the ants because it has this huge message throughout this book like do we matter does our existence matter really beautiful coming of age story and this beautiful character arc of the main character being so negative and thinking humanity is just a piece of shit trash and then becoming more optimistic and hopeful towards the end and realizing what it means to love someone and what it means to fall in love with humanity and like love us for all of our flaws and oh my god like i tend to be a more pessimistic person so to read a book like this or to read a book like we are the ants where the character starts off exactly how i am like very pessimistic and then it just turns into this optimism and it's very hopeful it makes me feel more hopeful about the world and about humanity and feel like that's just very rare for me to get that from a book this book just had me laughing it had me crying and i just loved it so much if you do want to see my full book talk on this book as well which i'm also very proud of i'll put a link in the description for that if you want to see it <laughs> both of these books were great though and they both deserve to be number one and i love them both with all of my soul those are all of the best books that I have read in 2018. I'm sorry if there was any loud noises throughout this video because there is a fucking crazy wind rainstorm outside of this window. Have you read any of these books in my list? What are your thoughts on them? Are they also some of your favorite books that you've read? Or let me know what are your like top three favorite books of the year because I would really love to know. Any of the book talks that I mentioned will be in the description if you want to check out any of my full book talks on some of my favorite books. I have a few videos left for the end of the year still so look forward to some more videos coming at you soon and thank you guys so much for watching as always and I will see you guys soon with a new video. Electric lights. Also kind of reminds me of where the hand- oh my god is A Little Life by Hannah by- oh my god. The ending of this book? Okay, that was the win. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because I have this like wild fashion to, you know, fight between- and I know that this book is kind of being marketed at- marketed at- mar <laughs> I know that this book is kind of being marketed as a psychological romance- what am I saying? Oh my god. So, I know that this book is kind of being marketed in- mar <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, Eric and Andrew, and then it's their dot adopt- English! Their adopted daughter, Wen, and it follows them. They go to their- Why do I keep saying it follows them? Okay, now my camera's going, so you can say hi to you two. <laughs> Oh, 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 now you're shy. Ready, oh, open the bug. Shout out. Hello. Oh, okay. Hello? Hey. <laughs> Hello, world. Hey, am I speaking to Gabby? Yeah. Gabby, I want to tell you right now, you are an amazing person. Oh. The book, the book you recommended me is freaking amazing. Oh, really? It is amazing. You two are amazing. You guys are awesome. You guys rock. Oh, my God. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. That's so, that's so nice. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, hey, Gilbert, I gotta go, okay? Okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Alright.